Vibration monitoring equipment can be tested by producing a known amount of simulated vibration on a machine and verifying the proper response of the equipment. This is typically referred to as a dynamic test. To perform this test, you will need a wobulator and a voltmeter. The wobulator kit should include a dial indicator with a 10 thousandths resolution. The process begins by setting up the test device. If your unit has a reference mark for the desired amplitude of oscillation, place it on 5 mils. If there is no indication, like this one, hold the receiver over the center of the disc, then rotate approximately half the distance to the edge of the disc. Secure the swing arm in place. Next, locate the bushing that fits the dial indicator and install it in the swing arm. Ensure the split of the bushing lines up with the split of the swing arm clamp. When you place the indicator in the assembly, let the plunger bottom out, then lift approximately 10 thousandths of an inch. Secure the dial indicator by tightening the receiver. Rotate the disc by hand until you find the highest point of measurement. Zero the dial out at this point, then rotate the disc one full revolution, taking note of the total measured oscillation. Use the swing arm to adjust the total oscillation until exactly five thousandths of an inch is measured in total travel. Once you have achieved exactly five thousandths of an inch, it is generally a good idea to mark this spot using a marker. Rotate the disc to the midpoint of the travel, which should be 2.5 thousandths of an inch. Place a reference mark on the disc for future use. Loosen the locking screw, then remove the dial assembly, being careful not to move the swing arm. If your probe is not already connected to a proximeter, go ahead and do so now. Ensure the extension cable is of the correct type and length and that the probe and cable are both compatible with the proximeter. Ensure the device is powered with the proper voltage. In this case, it is a loop-powered vibration transmitter which uses 24 volt DC. Place the multimeter test leads on the terminals which represent the gap voltage. To determine the proper gap voltage setting, you will have to refer to the spec sheet of the proximity probe you are testing. First, identify the range of linearity. This specific probe has a range of 55 thousandths, starting at 10 thousandths from the end of the probe. Most proximity probes have a response rate of 200 millivolt for every mil of travel. This means that every 10 mils of travel will produce 2 volts of change. Most proximity probes will measure slightly less than 1 volt at 10 mils. So using the 200 millivolt per mil scale, determine the exact voltage at the center of the linear range. This calculated gap voltage will be used to ensure the surface of the disk is within the linear range of the sensing device. Select a bushing that fits the proximity probe to be tested. Mount the probe in the swing arm in the same manner as you did the dial indicator. Let the probe rest on the surface of the disc. It may be necessary to loosen the locking nut to provide the probe with adequate insertion length. Secure the probe in place with the finger screw of the swing arm. Monitor the voltmeter while you use the jam nut to pull the tip of the probe away from the surface of the disc. Continue pulling the probe away from the surface until the previously calculated gap voltage value is measured on the multimeter. In this case, it will be approximately 6.5 volts. Switch the voltmeter to read AC volts. Switch on the power and adjust the speed to the approximate speed of the machine the equipment will be installed on. If your multimeter is equipped with a min-max feature, this works the best. Just make sure that you do not activate this mode until the disc is rotating and the voltage value is stabilized. Record the average value. If you are using my spreadsheet, simply plug the numbers into the dynamic test table. The spreadsheet will automatically calculate the voltage measurement and provide you with the actual measured travel as well as the deviation from the standard. A pass or fail condition will be flagged using a green light or a red light. If you are not using the spreadsheet, the process of calculating these numbers is pretty simple. To begin with, it is important to note that the AC volts measured by a basic voltmeter is actually the RMS value of the AC sine wave. Since we want to know the actual total amount of voltage fluctuation, we must convert this measurement to a peak-to-peak -peak voltage. Begin 
by multiplying the value displayed on the screen by the square of 2. Then double that number. This is the amount of actual voltage fluctuation produced by the proximity measurement. Now we must apply the incremental scale factor, or ISF, to this measurement to convert the voltage change to a change in distance. If you want to determine the amount of travel the proxy probe detected using this ISF, you would divide the peak to peak voltage by 200. The number you get will represent the amount of distance the assembly measured. The amount of difference between this number and 5 represents the total amount of error of the assembly. And if you wanted to determine what the actual ISF was, since we independently measured the total disk travel at 5 mils, you could divide the calculated peak-to-peak -peak voltage by 5, and you get 201.9. So the error for this assembly is slightly less than 1%. Take note that the calculated peak voltage can easily be converted to actual travel distance by moving the decimal two places to the left.